Welcome to Lutron. Um, in this video today, we're going to show you a series fence versus a parallel fence and how you can go about choosing your uh, electric fence for your house or your commercial property as well as the different materials used. So uh, to start, we're going to start with the COC and what exactly is a COC? Uh, so a COC is a certificate of compliance that you would need if you're uh, selling your property or when your fence is being installed, your installer generally sends you a, or issues you a COC. So um, in this in this fence here, it's a series fence, it's, it's a Lutron fence, it's, um, it's, it's how we install our electric fencing versus a parallel fence, which is uh, what uh, some guys use uh, and do. Uh, Cost-wise, this, this fence uh, would, would cost you about three grand more than that fence. But in terms of your security, you're like, um, you're like 200 times better, more secure with this fence than that fence. So we're just gonna start. Um, if you have an electric fence at home or thinking about, about putting one, these, these are the things that you should look for. So uh, number one is your energizer and the size of energizer that, that, that is used for your property. So if you have a 100 meter uh, boundary property wall, you use a standard uh, name tag wizard for energizer. If you're having a bigger fence like a 600 meter property, you then go for a bigger energizer, which is an M18. Um, on this fence here, you see there's a wizard for energizer also done. Um, most guys could actually, or some guys actually, put a smaller energizer and that does 800 meters but the connection which is in parallel is not effective. So you can get a cheaper price um, using a smaller energizer, but your fence is not actually secure. So just be sure when someone's coating your electric fence, you ask them about the specs and the dimensions of the energizer. Then the, the other things are to look for are your brackets. Each of your brackets need to be a maximum distance of three meters apart. Uh, that goes for your gates as well. And then your, your warning signs, which, which we call danger signs, needs to be a maximum of 10, 10 meters apart and you should have them on your property. If you don't have any of these things mentioned so far, your fence is not legal or COC compliant. Then you, you should have earth spikes. You should have three earth spikes. In this video, you can't see earth spikes, but you should have three earth spikes at your energizer or below your energizer or to the nearest point. And then one, one earth spike every 30 meters following that. And in terms of your electric fence itself, um, you need to have, if, you, if your property is on the coast, you need to have stuff like Denzel tape, line clamps, or silicone tape, and proper stainless steel ferrules or tin coated ferrules. It's uh, it's obviously depending on on your area and how far you are from the sea. We always recommend the stainless steel wire, T16 grade. Um, if you're about 10 kilometers away from the coast, you could go with the 1.2 mil. If you're within five kilometers of the coast, we recommend the two mil at least. Um, so these. This is the energizer, this is a siren. We always recommend a siren on our fences. Uh, you could put an electric fence up without a siren. Uh, the downside to that is when the fence alarm is activated, the, the energizer makes a noise and if the energizer is installed in your garage or your room, you're not gonna hear an alarm. Where if you have a siren, you're gonna be alarmed by the siren noise and, and, and obviously you know that someone's in, into your property. Then you can also put additional stuff like a, a light indicator, we call a fence light, that blinks every second the fence uh, pulses and that will show you that your fence is on so you have peace of mind and um, from here we're going to show you this is a called surge arresters this is essential for COC it's to protect your fence from lightning and your energizer and what we want to demonstrate now is a series fence you'd actually see so in this fence the power direction travels on the first wire along here loops up to the third wire comes along this way goes back up comes along this way goes back up and effectively goes along that way, comes back and returns to the energizer. That's a series connection, and that's how a series fence should be connected. Effectively, if you cut any of these live wires, it should trigger your alarm. Uh, that's how an electric fence should be installed, that's how it's meant to be installed. Uh, however, if you've got a big fence, like an 800 meter fence, you can't use one energizer, you've got to use a two zone energizer or two energizers. You get guys who actually use this energizer and connect the fence like in parallel, and that's when you start having issues. So I'm now going to demonstrate by cutting the live wire. So you guys can just maybe come close. You can see that the fence is on. This light indicates the fence is on. And I'm just quickly going to grab a meter. So this is a fence scope meter that you could purchase from us. Uh, it, it basically shows you if you want to measure your fence. So I'm measuring off the live wire. And there you are showing me um, 
5 kV uh, peak and a 7 amp which is the current. Um, the reason for the 1.5 being so low at this point is, is there's no earthing into the ground. So there's no earth spikes. So we're now going to demonstrate by starting to cut the wire and fence is connected properly you should trigger the alarm. This is if an intruder was trying to separate your wires or trying to cut it. I hope this is going to insulate me but here goes. <laughs> It should take three seconds and then trigger along. So there you are. Uh, luckily, my pliers didn't insulate me. So this is if an intruder cut cut any of your wires, that will trigger the alarm after three seconds. So this happens before the guy can actually enter your property, which uh, will obviously alarm you before they can actually get into your house, making you safe. So now we're going to go ahead and go along this fence. Um, this is a typical type of fence that most guys would do for a cheaper price. And as you can see, uh, there's no line clamps on the HD cable. There's no Denso tape. There's no warning signs. Um, there's no surge arresters. And your fence is wide and parallel, meaning if, I'm going to show you just now by cutting a wire and the, the, the sign won't trigger. Um, this is what we do not recommend. And if you are having a fence something like this, Please give us a shout to come and have a look at your fence because if you are thinking about selling your property you're not going to get a coc for something like this and uh, it's going to be quite quite costly to repair so we're now going to measure the voltage in this fence let's show you it's also on there you can see it's showing you 1.5 kva uh the fence is on let's try up here there we are showing you so the way the power travels in this fence, like we went through that, was that side, it will travel on this first wire, but you see the bridge on, is on this side now and not that way. So that basically means the power doesn't go all the way along this line. So in, in actual practice, if this fence was 800 meters long uh, and you had, uh, this is an eight line fence, so you'd possibly have six live wires here. So, you, so your total distance will be 800 times six, which will be your live wire distance. But in actual fact, your, your live wire distance now will just be only one length of this wire, which will be 800 meters. And that's why the small energizer would effectively do your fence, or you think you're doing it, but, but you're not actually. So I'm now going to go ahead and cut the fence wire and show you that, that it will not activate. So we're going to go ahead. So same, at same point in the center, we should cut the wire. And you'll see why a series fence is more effective than a parallel fence. Here goes. So you count three seconds. One, two three so the sign doesn't activate so this this would allow for someone to get into your property and get to you and as you can see the energizer still pulses so i'm now going to show you that the fair that the fence is still on and, and the sign is still connected by trying to trigger the fence through a, another solution let's try that that should trigger us to go along this is the most unlikely place that someone would try to get in which would be where the loops is because uh they would normally try to get in from the from the center so i'm now going to trigger it and you should see that the siren should trigger now only.